Hello, welcome. I hope you're well. I'm glad you found us. This is the Just Bloody Post-It podcast. I'm Helen Perry and this shows for anyone marketing themselves, making stuff happen and putting it all out there on the internet. She who dares or he. My work is about helping with that. I get people together for courses and workshops and we talk about how to do Instagram and emails and whatnot which usually is a lot about dealing with imposter syndrome, finding clarity and confidence and trying things out, testing, just bloody posting it. I invented this podcast to prove that just bloody posting it works and to use it to talk to people about how they balance getting work done and talking about it on social media. Can I share that I've had a bit of a block about inviting people onto this show, sending the emails? You open yourself up to rejection every time you do it right. But if you don't ask, you don't get. And when I invited this week's guest on, I sort of closed my eyes and pressed send on the email because I'm punching, to be honest. But she said yes. Tiffany Han is a coach, speaker and podcaster. Not just any coach, speaker and podcaster. She's been doing this online stuff beautifully since the noughties. Her podcast, The Tiffany Han Show, has been changing lives since 2014. She invites folks she works with to transform their lives from black and white to full radiant technicolour. She connects and is going to share with us the secret of great contents. Really think about how can you connect with somebody on a personal level? Like I am always trying with all of my content, my goal is to make eye contact with people, to help somebody feel less alone. I love it when people email me and they were like, I heard your podcast and it was like you were talking directly to me. We also chat about Instagram, about where to share your best thoughts, how coaches can make their message stand out online. This is a really tricky one. I work with lots of coaches. How any of us can make our message stand out. Tiffany's recently been diagnosed with adult ADHD, so we talk about that, and alcohol or no alcohol. But ultimately, it's about how it's all about the simmer. I first experienced the power of the Han at a conference for bloggers a few years ago in London. Tiffany, you were the keynote speaker. You had the room in the palm of your hand because you tapped into a common enemy, at least at the time, a gremlin, Instagram, and how it perhaps wasn't making everybody feel totally awesome. Do you remember that? And where do you stand on Instagram now? <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That was such a that was such a fun conference. Where do I stand now on Instagram? Uh, you know, they are is where I stand. I think that I keep trying to quit Instagram um, and I can't quit it because there are amazing things about the platform and I've made amazing connections and I've made friends and um it is, it's not something that I'm willing to walk away from. And I know that a lot of the ways that we're taught to interact with the platform are actually not working. And so I am always trying to find or refine or refine or redefine my way that I navigate the app so that it works for me and I don't work for it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to get to. Like, how do you make it work for you? What does that look like day to day, month by month? In a lot of ways, it looks like me forcing myself to ignore the like three quick tips articles, right? Because um, I, I just every time they do that, then the algorithm changes. And my theory, this is completely unconfirmed. My theory is that whenever people start to not be on the app that much. Instagram changes the algorithm to then make everybody really interested in Instagram because that's where they get the data. And so I I decided a couple of years ago, I'm not going to worry about the algorithm. And instead, I'm going to focus on building relationships with people. Um, Because every time I try to do it the way that like they say I should, everything goes flat. 
I take a lot of breaks. You know, I try to delete the app on Friday and not reinstall it until Monday, even though we're supposed to be on there every day, all the time. I mean, I just, with my brain, I will literally open my phone in the morning and then be checking it constantly throughout the day. And I try to, I really, really try to like talk about real things or create content that like you, Helen, need to see, right? Whenever I'm creating, I'm always trying to ask myself, is there a reason that I'm putting this out there? And if not, it probably doesn't need to go up. We'll go back to content and marketing because I guess that's the heart of what I do and what I talk to people about. But stories actually are way more interesting. For people who don't know you, Tiffany, and who haven't connected up with any of your work, you help people to dot, dot, dot. What do you do? Um, I really try to help people be more of themselves, you know, and, and I like to say that I help people be their own biggest fan, the president of their own fan club. And I've been doing that for, I've been coaching for over 10 years. Um, and I started blogging back in 2008. So I've been doing this for a while in a lot of different iterations, right? I've done business coaching, branding coaching, life coaching, strategy, all of that. And it really comes down to, I want us all to live lives that we feel really good about and that feel good to us. Because I think a lot of times we can create those lives that from the outside looking in, we're doing all the things. Um, and I want to make sure that from the inside looking out, we feel fantastic. And what I know is that it has less to do with what we're doing and more to do with how we're doing it and how we're showing up. Uh, and I was wondering if there's a before and after in your story. Like I couldn't, I couldn't glean this from what I was reading online, but have you gone from maybe looking good on the outside and not feeling great on the inside? Did you do this for yourself before you started helping other people with it? Or did somebody else help you to feel more, you say, like life is technicolored? Yeah. 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 I, I feel like I've had so many before and afters. Um, like, and I'm, I'm currently in a different before and after, right? Like, I feel like I'm always, I feel like every time we get to an after that after then becomes the next before. Right. So, um, there is the, the before and after of like working at my nonprofit job back in 2008. And I was in the process of applying to business schools. I was to, I was looking into MBA programs. It started to download application packets and read the, the questions and, you know, there are standard questions like, why do you want to go to business school, right? It's not, they're not brain teasers. And I literally couldn't answer it. And what I realized when I pulled back was like, oh, I actually don't. I just want to do something that is going to get me out of the situation I'm in now that nobody's going to question me on, right? Because no, I'm getting an MBA. Everyone's like, that's amazing and fantastic. And you're going to be a fancy business person. So that was like the first, that was one of the the first times that I was like, not this. And I'm going to go into really something that feels completely unknown. I left my nonprofit job, um, moved in with my boyfriend, now husband. We traveled. I started working at a card shop and just like exploring things. And that was, that was really what took me into the entrepreneurial and coaching world. I've had many before and afters in my own business. I, I like to say that I am like a marketing strategist nightmare because I'm always changing my mind and I'm always like, I want to do something different. And I, you know, kind of reinvent the wheel, but I also like to think of it as like climbing a mountain, right? Because we're, we always have that foundation. When I started my podcast, I, I had been, I had been a blogger. I had been blogging, I think three days a week. And then in 2014, shortly I, after I had my twin daughters, I started my podcast. I like to say that I was kind of an accidental podcaster. Like I started it because I was thinking about doing a video interview series on my blog, but I didn't want to have to get dressed for it. Uh, cause I had these two brand new babies and, um, I, I just couldn't, that was just too, like one extra layer. And so I started a podcast instead. I'm so glad I started a podcast. And shortly after that, I realized that I wanted to kind of go all in on podcasting and not blogging. Um, I had another before and after in 2017 when I quit drinking alcohol and I've been very open about my sobriety and recovery. Uh, 
Then we moved to Colorado from California in 2018, and that was another kind of upheaval. And I'm currently, I just, a few weeks ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 41. Oh, were you? That yeah. is fascinating and completely new information. How did that come about? Did you always feel that there might be something I there? have, yeah, it's it's something that, I mean, when I was younger, I, I didn't think like, I have ADHD, um, but I always felt... You know, I was, I was always, and like even anyone listening to what I just said, like you can tell that I changed my mind. A lot. <laughs> um, the ADHD brain, if something is unstimulating, literally like your brain is like, nah, I'm just not going to do it. And so it's been so interesting since I've gotten the diagnosis and I've started to learn more to say, oh, for me, as soon as like my heart isn't in something, like, I am so uninterested in it. You know, I think that what that's done for me, like the blessing in that is that I can't fake it, right? Or we try to fake it and then we're like, nah, you know, sometimes we fake it for a year or five years, hopefully not our whole lives. But for me, I think that that, that timing gets shrunk down because if I'm not into it, then my brain is like, I'm just not going to do it. But it's something that I had considered for myself a few years ago because I had been reading some things. And um, the reason I talked myself out of getting the diagnosis then was like, oh, but everything's fine. Like I'm running my business. I'm taking care of my kids, all of that. And what what I think we don't talk about enough when we talk about the impact of mental health challenges are those internal impacts, right? So again, just like, We've got to think beyond what is getting done, how productive we're being, and look at how does it feel to be you when you're walking through your day. And I had a revelation about a month ago, you know, and there obviously we've all been through some trying times in the last year and a half um, where mm -hmm. I was like, it shouldn't be this hard. Right. I shouldn't be struggling this hard. And I started having some conversations with people and reading some stuff and and then re remembered a few years ago when I had it's another sign of ADHD is like not a great working memory. And I was like, oh, right. I forgot that that was a thing. And finally was able to talk to my doctor and talk to a different doctor and get some medication. So I'm starting to work on like this next next phase so yeah you're getting me fresh in another before and after place adhd or not adhd i love the idea actually of there not ever really being a, a clear after yeah. like we're always in a slightly different state of before and if you get to after it's probably not what you were hoping it was going to be anyway and the journey's way more interesting yeah. and why we're here yeah and you know i like to think of it as um we're always evolving, like humans, right? Like we're always evolving and really we're, we go through different chapters. And so as soon as a chapter ends, a new one starts. And what I know is I have, I have put a lot of pressure on the after, on the thing that I'm working towards and you get it and it's great. And I'm all about goals and I'm all about big goals and I'm all about doing things. And, you know, you wake up the next morning after you've gotten whatever the thing is and you're still you. You're still in your life. And and not to say that sometimes, you know, things can happen externally that are life changing. And that's amazing. And um, if you put the pressure on that thing to then define you and to be what allows you to make different choices or, you know, really go into that radical self-belief and finally trust yourself, you've, the trust comes first. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about your business. How do you make talking to mostly women, I guess, about this kind of thing into a business? How do you, how does it pay your bills, Tiffany, if you don't yeah. mind me asking? You know, I've done a lot of different revenue streams. And these days, probably 98% of my income comes from a year-long class that I teach. I'm actually changing that too. So I'm changing all of it up. Um for five, four or five years now, I've been teaching. My podcast used to be called Raise Your Hand, Say Yes. Um, I changed name of my podcast a couple of months ago to The Tiffany Hahn Show because I realized that I 
don't want to talk as much anymore about what we're doing, right? That that I want to change the conversation a little bit in a way that I think I had changed the conversation a couple of years ago and the podcast name just hadn't caught up. Um, and so I teach a year-long class and the new class that I'm going to be teaching starting in the fall is a year-long course called Grown Up Gap Year, which is um, a year-long class, less class and more like experience. I want it to be really experiential for anyone who is ready to take a break from striving and from letting their ambition dictate everything they do and really reconnect with themselves and realign their lives towards joy, freedom, radical self-belief, um, ease, expansion, all of those things. I work with a lot of coaches. Man, there are a lot of coaches out there. There are a lot of coaches on Instagram and all the platforms. And I think it can be a really hard thing to market. It's a really hard thing to describe. Like, what do you do? I'm like, what? a lot of coaches find this hard. What do you do? What do you offer? What's the change? How have you learned to talk about what you offer and what you do in a way that connects and lands with your people, your best people? So, I mean, I think that some coaches are like, I will help you start a business. I will help you find your career. That's awesome. And so for anyone listening, if you're a coach, if you have like a thing, like a sentence, great. I have had in the past, I've had sentences and most of the time, though, like my kind of the what I help people do becomes a little bit more metaphorical. I'll help you take your life from black and white to radiant technicolor. Um, and my goal, right, my hope is that my right person is going to understand what that means, right, and be like, oh. And then other people who are like, I don't get it. It's like, oh, OK, that's fine. I think that for my advice always is Figure out what really lights you up. Like, what are you going to be most excited about? Because like you said, it there are a lot of coaches out there. There are a lot of people doing what we do. And there there is a lot of marketing happening to us all the time. Really think about how can you connect with somebody on a personal level, right? How like I am always trying with all of my content, my goal is to make eye contact with people. Um, to help somebody feel less alone. I love it when people email me and they were like, they're like, I heard your podcast and it was like you were talking directly to me. That is my favorite. And I don't have a super condensed elevator pitch and I'm okay with that. Where does your online audience live? Where What does the heavy lifting for you? Is it the podcast? I think it's a podcast. Um, I mean, Instagram is probably like my numbers wise biggest audience. I feel like my podcast is how people, how I really build the trust with people, right? Because you don't spend an hour a week with somebody's Instagram feed and you don't spend an hour a week with somebody's newsletter. You know, there are people who have been listening since episode one, which is just mind blowing to me. I really try to lead with my podcast and remember that that is where I'm building like the deepest connections with people. I want to ask you about content and sharing and you're you appear to be a, a pretty open book mm -hmm. Tiffany you talk about lots of stuff in particular do you know what I'm interested in your sobriety when did you give up drinking so I quit drinking on January 5th 2017 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I have often wondered when I've looked at your content on the subject, I'm like, how does that land with people? Is that a tough one? Because that's a big change from being someone who's like, wait, glass of wine on Friday night oh, to like, yeah. never again, yeah. guys. How's that gone? How has that gone down with your audience? When I quit drinking, I was very open about it throughout the process. I've been very open about why. And when I talk about about drinking, it's not that I'm pointing a finger at other people and being like, you drink too much. There, There's a whole thing, like a whole mommy wine culture of like, I need a wine, I need wine to get through a play date, right? And so, so maybe I'll post something that's like, hey, guess what? Like, it's okay to get through a play date without wine. 
or something like that, right? And and part of what I'm trying to do there is really break up those misconceptions that we have that I know I had where I can't survive my kid's childhood if I'm not drinking um, because that was something that I believed, right? But I also try to do it with a lot of grace for all of us and try to really say it as like, I am going to offer this as a concept. Um, I am not necessarily coming out saying drinking is bad. Alcohol is bad. And, and if anything, you know, I think that it's the alcohol industry does a lot to keep us numb, right? We have to look at when we stay in these black and white lives, who profits? who benefits. And um, when you start to kind of go down that rabbit hole of the alcohol industry and the things that women especially are told about what alcohol will do for you, all of the great things, it's it, it, we are getting played so bad. Um, at the same time, right? Like I know for me, my decision to quit drinking had to come from me through me. And so again, I am, my goal, if I ever talk about something like drinking, is to to not create a conversation that feels like I'm pointing fingers or being accusatory in any way, but to offer up something that might stop someone in their tracks, that might make them think, you know, and and again, I think more people that are thinking about things is is always good. You feel comfortable being visible, being online. A lot of the people I work with, I'm going to think that maybe quite a lot of the people you work with have some boundaries, barriers, trouble with being themselves and be seen that way. How do we start to take those barriers down brick by brick so that we can be ourselves publicly without fear of judgment? I actually think that it's not that we have trouble being ourselves. I think that it's that we feel like we have to perform. Maybe someone out here is listening and they're sober, but they don't want to talk about sobriety, but they're hearing me and they're like, oh, maybe I should be talking about sobriety too, right? And like, that is not at all what I'm saying because I know that that I talk about a lot of things that other people are like, I've never talked about that. I'm not going to talk. It's because people are looking for the script. People are like, can you tell me what I need to do in order to get to this place? And it's missing it's it's missing the point because it has to be your script it has to be your way of doing it yeah it has to be the thing that brings you most alive when you can connect with other people on so for me i will say out loud what everyone else in the room is thinking it has gotten me into a lot of trouble in my life <laughs> um i i am the first to say that that is not always doesn't always work out but I think that I've figured out how to channel that energy and turn it into something that is useful for me and for other people. That doesn't mean that someone else has to do that, but I think that it's really, really useful to figure out what you could tell somebody, what you're comfortable telling somebody else that they might appreciate knowing or let them in behind the scenes. Can you tell some stories? Can you tell the truth? How willing are you to let yourself be seen? So there is a layer of vulnerability there. And it's going to feel like, especially for people who haven't been active online, right? I've, I also have had a lot of practice. I started blogging in 2008. So I have been doing this for a very, very long time. So at this point, I am comfortable with the sound of my voice, right? You build immunity to this yes. stuff. You yeah. Build, you build immunity to seeing a picture of yourself or a video of yourself. You come to accept that this is, in fact, what you look like, and that's fine. Or hearing your voice, and you just stop hearing, oh, wow, squeaky voice. You stop hearing it. it it's just your voice. Um, and like you say, don't compare yourself to somebody who's been doing that for years and years. You can get there if you want to. Yeah. I have two great phrases that in my head are attributed to mm. you. I think my favorite that I either heard you say on a podcast or I read it somewhere, Tiffany, is that if you're selling something or sharing something out there on the internet and you don't feel kind of really quite physically sick about how much you've been talking about it, you're not talking about it enough. True yeah. or false? True. 
Yes. And and I want to say, like, it's not that you're not talking about it enough, but it's that you're not talking about it enough to be effective in marketing in today's online. You've got to say it over and over and mm-hmm. over. Yeah. Is that what you do every time you're selling something? It is. And like, I get tired of myself. And, and th- there are times... When I will say, I have not hit my goals and I'm tired of talking about this, so I'm not going to anymore. And I think the key is that it becomes an active choice. But we have to remember that nobody is paying as much attention as we think. Trust the simmer. Mm, Yeah, I do say that too, yeah. That's one of yours, and what does that mean? That means to give things time, right? I think that we are so good at being efficient. And it's because like we've, had to be our whole lives because there is a lot that is put on our shoulders and there are a lot of people to take care of and there are a lot of needs to be met. Um, And I too am somebody who wants to execute everything immediately. But just like when you're making soup, you know, the simmer is where the flavor develops. And so my latest phrase that I've been saying to myself is give it another week because beautiful things will always get revealed that you didn't know where they are. Um, and, And I think that we're good at making up stories about how long things take, right? We're good at judging that. But if you can trust the simmer and you can say like, oh, okay, this is actually part of the process. You know, you, you, get, you get it boiling, you add all the ingredients, and then you let it sit on a low heat, that that is actually what makes it, makes the soup worth eating. Ah, j'adore. I love it. Finally, I want to share a moment from a WhatsApp conversation that I had with my friend Antonia. And Antonia is like a work buddy. Well, she's more than a work buddy, but she's one of the people I talk to about work in my life. Hi, Tony. And we were having a little bit of WhatsApp chat like you do 11 o'clock in the morning when you're a bit bored. And we were like, where are all the good people? Like, you know, we used to talk about this person and that person and we used to listen to them and we love their emails. And it's like, I feel like, they haven't grown and I've moved on and I, you know, and I'm like, I, who do I, who do I need to listen to now? And then we left our WhatsApp and both of us almost simultaneously came back about 10 minutes later and went, oh no, apart from Tiffany Han, she keeps like, she keeps like developing and we can like, we can go with her and she comes with us. And I wa- will say thank you to you for that. But also I was interested, who do you, who are your people? Who do you listen to? If you want to put a podcast on and be inspired or uplifted or learn something, who do you go to? Yeah. So I love the um, the On Being podcast with Krista Tippett. That is one of my very, very favorite podcasts. I also, I've just started listening to a podcast called You're Wrong About. And it's these two journalists who kind of do these deep dives. Um, I really like to listen to people having conversations, you know, and and try to stay in like as interesting conversations as possible. I don't listen to a lot of coaching podcasts, mostly because at a certain point, we're all kind of talking about the same stuff, which is fine because we all want people to like go out there and be their best selves and live their best life a la Oprah. Um, I like to make sure that, you know, when somebody says to me, I think you said this, and, and I want to make sure that if I hear somebody else talking about something that feels similar to mine, that I won't have to wonder if I took that unknowingly from their podcast. I mean, I'm sure I've done that before. It just finds its way in. Yeah. Got, we, everything that we consume. When I'm writing something, I have to like intentionally not read anything else on the topic because yeah. it just, it will find its way into it, your work. It will find its way in. We just, my husband and I just watched the movie Pitch Perfect. There is a scene that I had completely forgotten about where they're like at a party and Anna Kendrick's character says to the other kids, she says, make good choices. And like, I say that to my kids all the time. And I was like, oh, oh, I didn't even know I took that from Pitch Perfect. I am going to look up your podcast recommendations. I value them. I value your time. Thank you so much for joining me. I feel like we're just getting started. This was so fun. Thank you. Can we take away from Tiffany that it's okay to change and develop? It's your thing. If you want to rename your brand or your account or change the type of content you're sharing, do it. Of course things change. Take your people on the journey with you. Explain the thinking. They'll love you all the more for it. 
So shout out to the Apple podcast people. I appreciate your five star reviews. It makes a real difference to me to see that people are enjoying the show. And more importantly, it helps new listeners to have the confidence to dive in if someone else says it's okay. If you have a moment to share your thoughts, then can I ask for another favour and get you to write a little bit about yourself as well? I'd love to know more about who's listening, what they do and why they do it. That's your lot. I'll be back for more next week. Thank you for listening. Bye.